I just want to invite the prophetic voices in the house if the Lord's given you a word. We want to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. Hallelujah. says in Isaiah 59, 19, that where the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard. And the standard is a flag of a, 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 the royal seal. And I felt like there was some here tonight and you feel like the enemy has been coming against you. But I hear the Lord promising you tonight that He is raising up His standard over you, that He is raising a royal decree over you and over your household. And I felt like the Lord is saying, not only have I come to fight for you, but I am driving back, I am driving back, I am driving back the enemy. And I saw you then advancing, I saw you advancing and I felt like the Lord is saying, today is the day of your breakthrough, today is the day, it ends today, it ends today by the blood of the Lamb. It ends today in the word of our testimony. And I hear him say, not only am I fighting for you, not only have I overcome for you, but as my sons and daughters, you will now advance. You will now take territory. You will now move ahead from one place to another, from one place of glory to a new level of glory, from one place of victory to another place of victory. And I hear him saying, do not be moved by what you see. Only be moved by what you believe. Do not be intimidated by the enemy for I the Lord have fought for you and have overcome for you today we celebrate your victory in Jesus name Amen We give you the highest praise for you are the ancient of days you go before me you go behind me you're always beside me with all of your glory we give you the highest praise for you are the ancient of days you go before me you go behind me you're always beside me with all of your glory you go before me you go behind me you are beside me with all of your glory you go before me you go behind me you are beside me with all of your glory you go before me you go behind me you are beside me with all of your glory you go before me you go behind me you're beside me with all of your glory you go before me lord you go behind me lord i'm never without you i'm always within you i'm never without you i'm always within you I'm always within you, I'm never without you, 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 I'm always within you, you glory like a shield. Lord is in this place and I just saw the Lord Jesus just come and just step down and he went to the people and I saw his beautiful tan hands and he was taking people's hands within his hands and he was uh, as, had such gratitude for the worship that we had given him but he was also uh, making a statement that hey I'm this close to you I'm not so far away that I am unreachable I am right here and I felt that this was a time for miracles and for the supernatural because the Lord who loves you dearly is breaking through for you on your behalf Hallelujah. amen 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 Jesus isn't this cozy in here hey during worship, um, the Lord showed me there was a large stone and then some stepping stones. And in the spirit, I, I followed the stepping stones and they, they took me to the front door of this building. 
And I thought, okay. And then the Lord was stood there and with his finger, he drew around the large stone and then the stepping stones. He drew around each one. And then suddenly like a template lifted up and there's like a, a double version of, of the large stone and the, and the stepping stones. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, in every place, every ministry, every church, I place a foundation stone and then the steps that take you to it. And I said, what does this suspended steps mean? He said, those are Glory City's steps. That is Glory City's foundation stone. He said, if any foundation stone that I put in place is strong enough and to take the weight of, of anything that I, that I put before a church. He said, this is Glory City's foundation stone and these are our steps. And then he took the foundation stone and I said, Lord, what are you doing? He said, I need to go replant this and it won't be far away. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Barry. Christ is our foundation. Hallelujah. I really felt like uh, as we were worshipping, I was breathing in the clear crystal mountain air of the heights. And to me, it was like this place is the is that going to the heights and I saw like a mountaineer just short of the pinnacle and I thought Lord you're getting us to the highest point you're bringing us in I want to encourage you that we're on the up and up we're on the place that's going to be uh, uh, releasing atmospheres and presence and heavenly touches that's going to break through and fr free up and heal and deliver I believe that God is calling us up into the heights and that we are there but we're not at the pinnacle yet hey just breathe in the air that we're now breathing in because this is a place right now that is taking us into places that it's going to lead us further up into the top and we'll plant the flag on top of the on the pinnacle and receive what God's got this this is a good day. This is a great day, folks, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For those of you who may not know, the, the glory gathering started not far from here. And as Cheryl and I drove in today, we actually went past where it used to meet. And I heard the Holy Spirit say that this is a day of revisitation. But it's not... It's not the same as before. In fact, it's new. And I actually saw water going through floodgates. And I heard the Lord say, get ready because the floodgates are about to up, open. And that which we have seen so far has been glorious. And there's, But there's a new wave of His presence, of His glory that are coming. The Lord says it's not an old visitation. It's a new visitation in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I just want to confirm some of those words. During worship, I, I saw some oranges being cut up. And if you've ever taken a kid to soccer or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. They were cut up into portions to have during halftime. Now, I'm not saying that God is saying this is halftime. But what I'm saying is that the Lord is saying that we are being um, given a refreshing time. Giving a, given a time. Now, so I'm a Kiwi and I grew up in the 80s and 90s watching the All Blacks thrash the Wallabies time after time after time. Okay. Now, so now, now the question is why? And, and I'll tell you why. The All Blacks paid, the All Blacks paid a second half better than their first half now this is this is true this is true anyone that studies sport will know this to be true and that's why they had those victories but this is what i'm saying and why the lord's showing me this because i saw rugby boots that needed to be re, um re relaced and repaired we are in an intermission if you like we are in a time but it's not a time to relax and certainly if you've ever taken a kid to a soccer game at halftime the last thing you want to do is see them taking their boots and their things off ready heading for the car that's not what we're doing here this is actually a time where we gather around the coach and we say okay coach what's next and we refocus and we re-strengthen and we come together and in a good team which is what we are that's what we've become a good team 
because the Lord showed me that the anointing that we carry has come with us. It doesn't really matter where we are, although it does, but it doesn't because we carry what we carry. And what we've got now is unbreakable. It is a winning streak. So it's time to actually take a look at yourself, take a look at your boots. Do they need to be relaced? Are there things that you've neglected that you need to get back on board with? Because when we come out of intermission, we're going back onto the field. Now that's not to say that things aren't gonna happen. I'm talking about taking territories. So we took a territory in Kelvin Grove. And wherever we go to from here, we will take another territory. But we are in a sojourn, just like Barry said, just like the, the um, what do they call that, the, the base camp before you take the next summit. And that's where we're at right now. We're at a base camp. Now at a base camp, you check all your equipment. You make sure everything's right. You check in with your people and you get prepared. You don't slack off. And that's what we're doing here. So we, we need to enjoy this time and we need to get together. We need to check where we're at with God in preparation for the second half so that we can play like an all black. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the last part of that word, but anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, why don't you take a few minutes and welcome somebody. Tell them it's so great you found us. Find a seat. It's great to have you here. Hello, there we are. Hello, friends, it's good to have you here. Oh, all the people, everyone's here. Hello, 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 hello. I love how everyone's just busy talking and catching up. Same friends, same people, just a different building. <laughs> same people in the house of the Lord together. So, so wonderful, so, so wonderful to be here together. Hello, everyone. How are you? Are you good? Oh, it's so nice to see everybody here all packed in, squeezed in together. It's wonderful, so wonderful to be together. Hey, it's a little different, but we're together and it's wonderful. It's the same Jesus it's the same presence of God, and this is wonderful to be together. Man, weren't those words encouraging? So good, so wonderful. Actually, so good, Pastor Barry and Pastor James. I wanted to confirm that too. I felt like the Holy Spirit saying, I am fortifying you. I am fortifying you. And, and out of um, 
Jeremiah talks about being a fortified city. I felt like he was, glory city, you are a fortified city. You are being fortified in this time. And it was good in line with what Pastor James and Pastor Barry were saying. So encouraged my heart. Who's feeling encouraged? Man, God is a good God. And He is with us. He inhabits the praises of His people. And His presence is here. His glory is here. And we have this wonderful church community together. Oh my goodness, praise the Lord. Hey, we want to say a special thank you to everybody that came out yesterday for our um, working bee, packing up bee with Glory City at Calvin Grove. My goodness, it was fun. Who was there? Was it fun? It was fun. It was just this community of family together, coffee, pastries, packing. Some people very excited to get to this stage. <laughs> um, it was wonderful. And some amazing people. Pastor Lucci's dad, where are you? He was amazing. He's just like, poor, and we were walking out. I tell you what, there is a lot of testosterone there. People very keen to hack at a stage, I tell you. Um, it was wonderful to see beautiful community, beautiful family, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you to all those that came about and made it happen. And welcome here to church. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming here from there, from everywhere. It's wonderful to be together. It's wonderful to be together. And um, we want to say special welcome to our online friends. They've just joined us now, so thank you. It's wonderful to have you with us as well. Hey, we're here. Now, look at the per person beside, beside you. See the other person beside you? Uh, you're probably pretty similar people to who you usually sit beside. <laughs> Can I just say that? <laughs> we are creatures of habit and oh my goodness, it's like we literally got picked up and put back down again. <laughs> just looking at all of you, where, all you, where you all say you are, it's, it's quite, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love it. I know you all agree. <laughs> so fun. Hey, we want to welcome you to church. Hey, if it's your very first time, can you give us a wave? I don't know if we've got any visitors new to Glory City. Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome. Hey, it's so wonderful to have you here with us. Just keep your hands up. We've got something for you, ways you can connect with Glory City. And I know we're here, so we might have some new friends with us joining in. And we love making new friends. So welcome to Glory City Church. It's so wonderful to have you here. Hey, God is good. Hey, we have some wonderful things coming up. There is always good things coming. There's always good things in store. And next Sunday here at what time? 3 p.m. Next, everybody, how many fingers? 3 p.m. Everybody's got that vision of Pastor Catherine going, 3 p.m. Um, next Sunday here at 3 p.m. Uh, we have our wonderful um, Glory City Church, and we're going to have a guest speaker, Pastor Che Ahn from America. Yeah, he's an apostle um, in the Revival Alliance um, team with Bill Johnson and Ka John and Carol Arnott and Winnie Banoff. And um, yeah, an apostle for the nations and he's coming out of HROC. He's the leader of HIM and it's just going to be an honor to have him with us. So I would encourage you to make sure you're here and get ready to be blessed because it's going to be wonderful. And then we are still having Friday nights. Yeah, there's some special dates. Uh, here, yep, here they are. Miracle meetings. Yes, the slide has changed. We had one date wrong. So take a picture. Take a picture so you can remember we're going to be not in this location. We're going to be out at Red Bank. So make sure you take a picture. They're going to be our Friday miracle meetings and encounter meetings, which means people come believing God for healing and an encounter with the Heavenly Father. And it's going to be wonderful. We'd love you to be there. So make sure you, yeah, Victory Church. We're out at Victory Church. Our friends out there are being very kind to us to let us have our, our meeting out there. So make sure you, you make sure you put it in your calendars so you remember. And we also want you to just also 
check in with a friend in the next couple of weeks while we're transitioning and people have got different driving times. I remember when we used to drive, our family used to drive from the Gold Coast back in the day, over an hour with a newborn. <laughs> Jesus loved me. <laughs> he went before me. And, you know, it's different when you've got to make different distances and you've got to make it work. But we love you and bless you and thank you for doing that. And, I, and can we just be family in that process and love on each other and check on each other and, you know, call a friend and check on them and, and make sure if there's someone that you haven't seen, make sure you reach out and love on them and, and check in with them because we want to be the family of God together. But I don't think there's um, anybody missing <laughs> because we're all here and it's literally like we got picked up and put back down again. You guys are wonderful. It makes me happy. Okay, Psalms 22.3. It says, God inhabits the praises of his people. And couldn't you see that and feel that tonight? God was inhabiting the praises of his people. We could feel the genuine presence of God here because of our adoration and our praise towards him. And do you know what? Our tithes and our offerings are another way of giving honor and praise to God because we're honoring him with our wealth. And we're giving him honor by our tithes and bringing our tithes and offerings. Another form of worship and praise to God. And the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So his presence is inhabiting us as we're giving in our worship to him, but as we're giving our tithes and offerings as well. So I'd encourage you as you bring your tithes and offering into the storehouse, knowing he commands a blessing, but do it with the posture of bringing praise and adoration to him bringing praise and glory to him as you give into the kingdom of God because he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. There's all the ways you can give online. And if you do want to give um, cash, we do have some buckets at the back table. It's a little different to before. So if you want to do that, there's the buckets at the back and you can um, be blessed. But why don't I pray? Father, I thank you, God. (laughs) I thank you, Lord, for your word that says that you inhabit Lord, our praises, as we worship you, your presence is here. So, Lord, as we worship you tonight with our tithes and our offerings, Lord, we say all the glory to you. We say all the honor to you. We say all the praise to you, God, as we give with our tithes and our wealth and our offering. And we say, let it be to your glory. And we thank you, God, that you inhabit, your presence inhabits um, our praises as we give. Uh, Bless everyone giving tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Bless you. Oh, it's wonderful. Be strengthened this week, hey? God is fortifying you. He is strengthening you. He is preparing you for what he's got next. And there's good things in store, amen? Good things in store. Wow, our wonderful mama, Pastor Catherine in the house. Can we just actually give honor to Pastor Catherine and Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to honor you. Yeah, we want to honor you. We want to honor you for just leading us, leading us wherever we go. (laughs) We will praise and honor you. We love you. Thank you. God bless you. Well, I just want to honor all, all of you. I was so excited to see so many people come out after a big Friday night, late Friday night, full of the glory peeling yourselves up off the floor on Friday night, getting back there 8 a.m., working really hard. A whole big bunch of people came, and uh, it was beautiful. I, I, I had to babysit. My family came up. You know, they were there at early in the morning, and so I couldn't be there. So I drilled Aaron and Tom. I want to know everybody. He said, tell me everything. He said, they said, I can't tell you everybody because there were so many people. Praise the Lord. Lucy sent me a video. But as I watched, I just went, Lord, you're so wonderful. Look how willing they are just to give up their time, to care about each other, to help us. It, was, it really touched my heart. I just love our family. I love that word from Pastor James, except for the All Blacks. I loved, I loved that word because we're, t- we're a team, which is really lovely. And I really am, I am very grateful This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, As we grow, because I keep declaring it in this transition time, we're going to grow. We're going to double. Hallelujah. Even in the transition, uh, we can 
we can, uh, if we need to in a few weeks' time, we can open up that wall there and there'll be um, more seating there, which is great. So we've got room to grow. So you can invite all your friends. Hallelujah. And we can continue just to lift up the name of Jesus. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvellous in our eyes. Hallelujah. So Father, we come and say thank you. Thanks for helping us. Thanks for carrying us. Thanks for, for leading us. I love that word from Meg tonight, Lord. Thanks for going before us and behind us and beside us and your glory all around us. Thank you for helping us. And Lord, we ask, Lord, as you continue to lead us, Lord, we ask for tomorrow. Tomorrow is our pre-lodgement meeting with regard to a building we're trying to get. Lord, we ask that you'd give us favor and you'd give us help. Lord, your will be done for Glory City Church. Put us where you want us to be. And Lord, give us favor and go before us like a whoosh. Just go before us. Prepare everything we need for you are our provider. You are our helper. And we give you all the thanks and glory in anticipation. We are excited for all that you are doing. And in this time here, Lord, we're so thankful. And we speak blessing over this place, Lord, that you your presence would abide. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let me have a look around you. Uh, around, I just want to see you all. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, I see you, I see you. I just have to take a moment so I can take stock. Hello, hello. Hello, friends. Good to see you. Hooray. If I didn't get to hug, hug you all, hello. It's lovely to see you. And I really do appreciate Pastor Rebecca just um, reminding us to be looking after each other. Because we are, um, we're a family. The, the work of the ministry is not a, a, a vocational calling. It is the life of a Christian. And the, the job of the fivefold is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. So if you're thinking, oh, someone should pastorally get around that person, guess who needs to do it? It's you. You might think, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not on leadership. I haven't got any. Well, that me if you're a Christian, you are called to do the work of pastoring. Hallelujah. You are called to do the work of the ministry. That's why we come together. That's why we read the word. That's why we get equipped. We get equipped not so that we've got an orphanage with a few paid people looking after a whole bunch of people looking after a whole bunch of orphans. No, we, you have um, the, the preaching is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And the work of the ministry is needed more than ever as people share the good news, as they pastor each other, as they visit each other, as they think about, oh, I'm just so touched. You know, talking with different ones and knowing, hey, I know you've got to catch a bus and a train and a bus. And how'd you get here? Oh, someone gave me a lift today. And oh, it's so nice. I'm so thankful. So, but if you can be um, looking out for each other that way, this is your opportunity to do the work of the ministry. Do good, especially to the household of faith, the Bible says. Hallelujah. And it's beautiful. There's an aspect of the love of God that's only experienced together with all the saints. And there is an aspect of the love of God that's only experienced as you are releasing that love in ministry to each other. And there's something that it's, as you give it away, as you do it, it increases and gets doubled back to you and it just gets better and better. Hallelujah. So Father, we say thank you for today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Hooray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. How great is our God. Sing with me. God. Yes, you are great, God. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. 
Jesus, we love you. I love you. Jesus. Jesus. Holy and anointed one. Jesus. Can we just sing his name one more time? Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one, Jesus. Oh, risen and exalted one. God, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit here. Father, we thank you for your presence. And Lord, we ask that you'd speak to our hearts. God, I thank you that where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. Lord, I thank you that you bend low to listen. God, I thank you that you confirm your word with signs following. Lord, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask now that even as we gather around your word, as we read your word, as we hear the word, Lord, that you would spark in us revival. God, that you'd spark in us first love, fresh love. God, you do something in our hearts that would cause us, Lord, to move from a place of complacency into a place of accelerated growth. Lord, spiritually, physically. Lord, help us, Papa. In the name of Jesus, everybody said. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been looking this month at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. And I am being encouraged. I felt the Holy Spirit give us this strategy to take a portion of Scripture and to memorize it every month. Now, this memorization is not just for an academic idea or, you know, a religious thought. My prayer is, is that you allow the Word of God to dwell in you richly as you actually take time to slow down and look at a passage and pray into it, that you would pray with an expectation a belief that as I pray this, as I dig into this, you're going to do what I am asking. You're going to do what I'm praying. When I first started to pray this, I, I looked at it and I, th- I knew enough of Scripture to know that whatever I ask according to the will of God, I can have. Right? That's what the Bible says. And this is a prayer for all believers. This is for everyone who believes this prayer. So I was able to to attach my faith to this, that I'm going to pray this. I'm going to personalize it. And I'm going to believe that you're going to do what this prayer is asking you to do in my life. I'm actually going to receive this. I can receive this because whatever I ask according to your will, I can have. So I'm going to have this. I'm, I'm receiving this. And my prayer for you as you pray this this month is that you would have the Holy Spirit truly release faith in your heart that this is happening in me. This is happening. Something is happening as I'm praying this. As I began to pray this prayer, my life changed. I began to become, move from being this very insecure person to starting to have a holy confidence that's not arrogant, not presumptuous, but is, but is truly free and beautiful. Love that sets you free to the point where you aren't pulling on everybody else to fill your need for love. 
Now, we can do that in all sorts of ways, with trying to get sympathy or, or trying to get admiration or whatever we do. It's all often stemming from a deep desire in our hearts of, love me, help me feel okay about myself. And this deep need is something I recognized as a fault in my life and as a deficit. And I thought, well, God, I know you love me. Jesus loves me. This I know. Very good. But like, I yeah, know that. Everybody knows that. But, but I didn't truly have this deep indwelling knowledge. And this love of God that's being talked about here in Ephesians 3 isn't a one-off concept that you get tick, yeah, got it. This is something that is a river that is continually, uh, the Lord is continually wanting us to drink from because that river will continually displace all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. So when there are fears, fears of not being accepted, fears of the future, fears of the past, fears of whatever it looks like, it's simply the Lord revealing to you there is more love that you can receive, love that can replace, cast out fear. The world will tell you that uh, fear and anxiety can sort of be dealt with with yoga or meditation, emptying your mind. But the truth is, that's not the truth. The truth is that you can only deal with fear by displacing it with the one thing that can cast out all fear. And that is the perfect love of God. That love that empowered people like Stephen when he was being about to be stoned. Instead of panicking while they are cursing him and gnashing their teeth at him and, and trying to figure out a way to get out of it, it says his face shone like that of an angel. Because he was drinking from this glorious source that released peace and joy that was so noticeable that people like Saul, who was persecuting him, eventually had a tremendous conversion. So we're going to look at this prayer. Let's, let's put it up if we can. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a larger passage, but you can do it. Hallelujah. If you pray it, one of the most effective ways to learn scripture is to pray it. Really, it really is. So would you stand with me and we're going to say this together. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might in your spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hooray. Well done. You can be seated. Good job, guys. It, there is so much in this. Give me a wave if you've been reading this and starting to pray into that this week. Well done. You will, you will find deep encouragement as you do this, as you take the opportunity to take a deep dive and to look at it. Last week, um, Emily did a beautiful introduction as to 
for this reason, explaining what that for this reason was saying. So that's how we begin this passage. And we were looking at for this reason. And as you look through Ephesians 2, starting with, with by grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves, but it's, you know, not by works, but this, but by the magnificent grace of God through faith, we have been reconciled to God. We have peace with God. We have peace because we know, we know that we know we've been accepted. We've been given grace undeserved grace we've received forgiveness we've been made clean we've become in fact so holy by his great grace that we've become the temples of the living God hallelujah living temples wow a temple has to be holy therefore as God's chosen people holy and dearly loved because of this because of his great love for us because of of him, our peace, because he is our cornerstone, because he is our rock, hallelujah, because of who he is and what he's done, we the, and because we have Christ dwelling in us, therefore we pray, Paul says, that you would have power by his Holy Spirit, according to the riches of his glory, that you'd have power by his Holy Spirit to know Christ dwelling in your heart through faith. Now, I don't know if you caught that. Because Christ is living in our hearts, we pray that you'll have power to know Christ dwelling in your heart through faith. Seems a bit strange. Like For this reason, because Christ's living in your heart and you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, we pray that you'll have power by his Spirit to continuously have faith to know Christ dwelling in your heart. It's worth thinking about this. Now, people say, well, yeah, I invited Jesus into my heart. I've got Jesus in my heart. And it's true. He lives in you. His spirit lives in you. But Paul still prays for all the believers and all the believers everywhere that they would be supernaturally empowered to know Christ dwelling in their hearts through faith. As you look at other scriptures, say, for example, Colossians chapter 3, which is beautiful. There's a beautiful passage here, Colossians 3, um, 12 through to 17, talks about the character of the new man, the character of what it is to be a new creation. And, and we'll read this another time. But as I skip down to um, verse 15, it says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and ad admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. He's saying, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Christ is the word. The word lives in you. Let the peace of God rule. I pray that the Holy Spirit will strengthen you on your in the inner man so that you will know Christ dwelling in your heart through faith. What he's saying is that this Christian life is not a static sign up. It's a follow through as we follow him going from glory to glory. We, just as when a, a child is born, and I was so happy to see Rachel and Andre's little one here today is so beautiful. Uh, that child, as soon as it's conceived, as soon as it's born, we see this beautiful, fully formed human. He's fully human. He's not becoming human. He's fully human. Hallelujah. When you're born again, you are fully new creation, fully the righteousness of God in Christ. Hip, hip, hooray. I am fully redeemed. I'm not on my way to redemption. I'm fully redeemed. I'm fully saved. I'm not becoming saved. I am saved. By grace, I am saved through faith. Hooray. Therefore... We pray that you'll have continuous power by the Spirit of God to exercise faith that Christ is dwelling in your hearts. Why? 
Because as we understand this, we have to recognize that we have choice every day. We have freedom to choose every day. Every day, we have freedom to choose life or death. We have freedom to make choices in our thinking, choices in our conversations, choices in our entertainment, choices in our uh, daily uh, activities. We have choices. And he says, I set before you life and death choose life. I pray that you would so continuously be strengthened that you would grow continually in the revelation that Christ, God himself, is living, dwelling in my heart. And what does that look like? What does that mean? It's, it's growing up and learning to yield continually to the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. That in all our conversations, Christ, who is love, would I would become aware of that. That the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God is empowering me to become aware that God, who is kindness personified, God, who is love, love that is patient, that's kind, that keeps no record of wrongs, love that prefers one another, love that is, is, is so beautiful, is living in the inside of me. Love that always trusts, always hopes. Love that's filled with joy and peace. That considers others, doesn't seek its own. That sort of selfless, beautiful godliness is what lives inside of me. And the more I become aware of it, the more it'll grow up. See, the Bible says uh, here in Ephesians 3 about being rooted and grounded in love. That, you know, as a tree grows, the roots are alive and the roots continue to grow and the tree continues to grow. As long as it's living, it continues to grow. That's true. And we continue to grow. Growth is not a bad thing. It's a wonderful thing. God wants us to continue to grow in the revelation of his love for us. And he wants us to grow in the revelation of him dwelling in our hearts so that we learn what it looks like to habitually be like him. Hallelujah. Romans 5 verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that was given to us. Poured out. The love of God has been poured out. As we read Ephesians 3 here, we read, and it's a very good read in the Amplified. It, the, the words are, are showing it's continually pouring out. There's a river that flows from the throne of God. And that river is not just a, a one-time outpouring. It's a continuous river. And the more it flows, the wider it gets and the stronger it becomes. And that river of Ezekiel 47 river flows from the temple. We receive it as it flows from the throne of God and then it flows out through us. And it gets stronger and stronger the more you let the love flow. And the, the Bible also tells us that we love because... He first loved us. So we are reliant not on being good people, but on the one who is good to continually remind us it's no longer me who lives, but Christ who is love, who is goodness, who is patience, who is everything I need. He lives in me. I want to become more, con more continuously more aware, richly aware of Christ dwelling in my heart so that all of my branches are beautiful. All of the growth, all of the fruit in my life becomes lovely. Hallelujah. It's what he wants us to receive and practice and intentionally foster until it becomes our habitual learned way of life. I, I'm blessed. I, I, I love, I'm so grateful for my family. I have a beautiful family. I was making pineapple juice this week. I put it in the blender, like Emily does, with some 
mint. I thought, oh, I'll do this. I can do this. I've seen Emily do this. And it's leaking everywhere. And Emily comes alongside. She says, Mum, you didn't tighten the thing on the bottom. I'm like, oh. She says, but it's okay. It's a mistake. We can fix it. <laughs> oh. It's like, you're so like Jesus. <laughs> He's so lovely. And, and, and that's the truth. We need to be modeling to each other what Christ is like. Forgiving like Christ forgives. Helping each other. When someone has a wobble, just helping them with kindness, with mercy, not with judgment, not with pointing of the finger, but with kindly coming alongside them. I did something really silly this week, other than the blender. Oh, no. Just wait. So I went to the doctor and it was wonderful. I got all clear. I'm all happy. I'm happy driving home from the doctor. Woo-hoo. And then Dylan gives me a call and he says, hey, you're about to do your Facebook Live. Why don't you do it from the SDA church so that everyone knows where to come from? I went, great idea. I called Tom. Can you meet me there? I said, I drove here and we did our Facebook Live. Fantastic. And then I jumped in the car again and I, I went home. Only, um, and I got down here, down to Springwood Road, or down to the service road along the highway here. And right in that little bit where, you know, there's an island and there's only one lane, I ran out of petrol. <laughs> the car just stopped. Stopped. I was like, what's wrong with my car? And then I realised, oh, it's out of petrol. Now, I'm not the only one who uses my car, however, and I should have checked. I should have looked. I've only ever done this one time before. I was 19 and I ran out of petrol on the freeway. But it's been a long time. I haven't ever done it since. But it happened on Thursday, Wednesday. And so there I am, I'm stuck, and, um, and I freeze, like, ah, um, okay, call Tom. <laughs> so I call Tom, Tom, you should come. He goes, what's wrong? I've, lost, I've run out of petrol. And I'm on the road, and, and, um, and there's cars backing up behind me. <laughs> and you should come right now. He says, oh, I have to go and get a jerry can. No, I said, you should come right now. <laughs> But I was very calm. And then these lovely people came and they came and, can I help you? Get, look, just, I'll run across and get a jerry can. And, and then all these people, can we push you? And we couldn't put it into neutral because it's automatic. I didn't know how to do it. And <laughs> nobody, and, and there were so many lovely people and they filled up my car. And I, oh, oh it was lovely. But you know, you know what happened? As I got home, or as I was driving home, I realised something. I was like, I didn't even get flustered. Normally, the old me would have been really flustered, especially about people being backed up and... I didn't get flustered. I was happy. I gave the guy who helped me a big hug and I thanked everybody. (laughs) I got home in the car and then I had a meeting with Naomi. We had a lovely time and... And I realised, hey, this is working. There is a genuine peace. There is a genuine joy that even other th- things that normally would have flustered me, are not, they're not having the impact because I'm happy. I'm, I'm just happy. Hallelujah. And it, my joy doesn't get stolen. It doesn't mean that there's never going to be a time where I get flustered, but I, those, those times are becoming fewer and fewer and fewer because I'm just like, I've got this big underground river that just is like happy. All the time, happy. Hallelujah. All the time, peaceful. All the time, joyful. Not because of me, but because of what I am choosing to let rule in my heart every day. 
And that happens not by doing it once off in an encounter night. It happens by every day choosing to let the a peace of God rule in my heart. It, it comes by believing, God, you're going to give me power today to know. That is to be intimately acquainted with the love of Christ that passes knowledge. And it's beautiful. I find it even in my day to day. The Lord is so kind to me. I'll be having a shower and getting ready and thinking, oh, I should go and pray this. And I'll think to myself and picture myself by my window on my knees praying this. And then I'll realize I actually could just do it right now. It's okay. And, and I mean, this sounds so basic. But the Lord wants to have relationship with you that is fundamental and basic, that isn't religious and, and set up, you know, it's only when you have your prayer time that he talks. He, he wants you to be living this life of being continually receiving the love of Christ that passes knowledge, the kindness of God. I was um, saying when I came home from Brazil that during my trip to Brazil, we were very, 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 very busy and often getting home at one o'clock in the morning and having to leave at seven in the morning. And I remember one night I was just, I was starting to feel a little bit flustered, like, oh, I can't find one. I need to go to bed and clean my teeth or brush my hair or whatever I have to do. And, and I was like, oh, where is it? And I, the Lord just said, it's just here. I'm like, oh, your kindness, God, you're so kind. You care about the little things. When I would not be kind to me, I would say, suck it up, princess. Stop you. Stop you. Yeah, carry on. He's the guy. I, I love that you're doing this for me. Here, let me help you. And his, his mercy, his kindness melts me and reminds me, hey, I can be like that to me and I can be like that to others. You see, if I live continually being tough on me all the time, I'm going to always be tough on everybody else. But if I yield to the amazing kindness of God and let it impact my every day, then it's going to impact the ones that I touch every day. It's going to impact the ones that you might think in the natural don't deserve patience and they're going to get lavished with patience because you're receiving it. You're having it uh, dwell in your heart richly. Hallelujah. Psalm 46 verse 4 says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Isn't it delicious? Psalm 36 verse 7 says, How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, because his loving kindness is so precious, therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. For with you is the fountain of light. In your light we see light. This river that flows from his throne is love that is beyond your human comprehension. It is too good for you to humanly reason. It is better than you can emotionally, physically or spiritually process. You need Holy Ghost power to actually let yourself believe. You need Holy Ghost power to have the faith that is required to have the fullness of this one who is love living and dwelling continually in you. And it's an invitation. It's an invitation that if you would pray, Holy Spirit, strengthen me to know Christ dwelling in my heart. Christ who is love dwelling in my heart through faith. Imagine what it looks like to every day grow in this revelation. Hey, that it's not Catherine who's trying to be Christian, but it's actually Christ living in me. I have been crucified with him. I, I, I died, yet nevertheless I live. Hallelujah. But it's no longer me. It's Christ who lives in me. Christ who is the very definition of love. And allowing that to rule my day, rule my night, consistently, diligently, will result in fruit that will cause the river that makes glad 
to flow through you. Hallelujah. And touch the world around you. Hallelujah. I still haven't got onto the the height and the depth and the width and the breadth and the fullness of God to be felt. Oh, <laughs> oh it's so good. You can read it and uh, you can sort of have a sneaky preview <laughs> through the week. And, and you can talk about it in your revival groups. Think about it. We, talk, we, we love to have conversation over, over the breakfast table or in the car about what this means. What, what does it mean to you? How is that practically outworked in your life? And I believe that if you will just humble yourselves like little children and start to read and receive and meditate on and apply this word in your life, you are going to see dramatic transformation continually take place in you and through you. It'll change your prayer life. It'll change your conversations. It'll change your habits. It'll change your thinking. It'll change your physical body because he fills all in all. Height, depth. Oh, it's going to be good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, Father, oh, God. We want this word to dwell in us richly. And we ask, Holy Spirit, we give you permission. We open the gates of our hearts, the gates of our church, that you, Holy Spirit, would teach us, that you'd give us supernatural power, that you'd strengthen us, fortify us with your Holy Spirit's power, that we may know, intimately be acquainted with you, Christ who is love, Christ who laid his life down for us, Christ who rose again, Christ that we may know you dwelling in our hearts through faith. Lord, that we being rooted and grounded in love may continually, oh God, have supernatural, incomprehensible power to know this love that passes knowledge, the height, the depth. Oh God, that you're with us in the darkest and the hardest places. You're with us on the height. You're with us in the everyday. Lord, I thank you that you are with us and that you would continually fill us to overflowing, that your name would be glorified in the church in all generations. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hey, don't leave it up to me on Sundays to get you grounded in this passage. Respond to the dinner bell. It's ringing. And it smells better than hot, fresh sourdough. It is. I do like me a good sourdough. But it smells better than that. It is better than that. Way incomprehensibly better. Don't hold back, but dig in. Read it tonight as you go to sleep. Read it in the morning. Pray it. I dare you. Because if you pray this believing you can have what it says, and you can because the Bible says you can have whatever you ask according to his will, this is totally kosher. It's in the book. You can have that. Who wants it? Who needs it? That was actually a question. Yeah. If you acknowledge you need it, And you know you want it and you ask for it, you will have it. He will do it. Hooray. Praise the Lord. Amen. (laughs) I'm laughing because I know what you're going to (laughs) get. It's going to be so good for you. (laughs) It's going to be glorious. You're going to be so happy. In three months' time, if you do this solidly, you won't recognize yourself. You'll become lovelier and lovelier and lovelier and lovelier and shinier and shinier. Hallelujah. More and more patient. People say, why are you so happy all the time? Hooray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your presence here right now. I'm just going to ask, um, actually, Sarah, you're, you're baby free right now. Come on up. Give me a hand. Beck <laughs> and James, let's just pray for a few people, can we? 
Thank you. You know, I felt the Lord show me that there's someone here today, and you have some um, lumps or cysts. There's like a, a little a cluster of lumps or cysts, or I don't know what they are, little tumors or lumps or cysts. But there's like a cluster, little cluster of them, maybe three or four or more, I don't know. But I saw the Lord specifically show me those. And whether you're here or on live stream, if that's you, I want you just to put your hand on that part of your body where those lumps or cysts are. Because now in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit's touching you. I thank you now for that healing happening in Jesus' name. If that's you and that makes sense to you, could you just stand up so I can see where you are? If that if that's you, it's like these lumps or cysts. Yes. So put your hand there, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now I thank you, gone in Jesus' name, Father. We say thank you for healing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Georgia Sawiris, can I pray for you? I felt like the Lord just highlighted to me, you to me quickly. Thank you, Lord. You can come forward if you want. Don't be shy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Father. I hear the Lord saying, Georgia, that this is your hour of visitation. This is your hour of visitation. I hear Him saying that you are growing up in the things of God in a really beautiful way in this season. I hear the Lord saying, I'm coming to meet with you. I'm coming to meet with you. And just like Pastor Catherine has talked about tonight, I see you preparing a place for Him to seek Him out and to find Him. And I see you opening up the Word and Jesus being revealed to you in ways you haven't yet known. And I feel like the Lord is saying, come and feast of me. Come and eat of me because this is your day. This is your hour. This is your time. And I'm reminded of um, 1 Timothy where he says, do not, Paul says, do not let, 4 verse 12, don't let anyone look down on you but because you are young, but set an example for all believers in speech and love and life in faith and in purity. And so God, I thank you, Father. Well, I hear him saying, you're like a standout in the crowd. I hear him saying, Georgia, you're a standout to me. You're a standout to me that I look at you and I love you. I look at you and I love you. So I ask you, Lord, that you would, Lord, make her aware of the greatness of the power towards her who believes. Lord, I thank you, Lord, even for that continual river. Lord, being released to her and through her, to her and through her. I thank you, Lord, for an eruption in this temple. A great eruption in this temple. Rivers of living water. I declare, come forth, come forth out of her today. Hallelujah. I feel like the Lord is, um, is going to move on people who have uh, blood disorders. So I guess that's like an anemia is a blood disorder. Um, hepatitis is a blood disorder. Diabetes is a blood disorder. Who, who are those people? There's at least four of you. Come on forward. Come forward. Actually, if you could all come down this row, that would be awesome. Or for you, the Lord is just, I can actually see water flowing from heaven. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there's a spirit of healing in the room right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless what you're doing. I want to pray for anyone who's had an, I feel like it's an eye irritation or your, your sight is actually worsened. Some, if, you, if your eye is irritated, is an irritation or there's a, a worsening of your sight, I want to pray for you. I feel like God wants to restore sight. There's a restoration that God wants to do to people's sight. So if you've seen a deterioration in your sight, um, I want to pray for you. Can you just come here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just maybe just wave your hand then if that's you, if you're wanting. Yeah. Specific deterioration in your sight recently. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, just hands up if that's you. Stand up if that's you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every, yeah, every disease that's deteriorating. Lord, everything that's going backwards. Lord, I just thank you. I just decree a stop now to in Jesus' name. And I declare a reversal to deterioration. And I declare an increase in healing now to sight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We release healing to eyes now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we please thank Pastor Catherine? That 
word she released tonight is a word for this season. Um, woo, it's just, that's world class, you guys. That's astounding revelation that we get to partake of. But I think, thank you. But I felt like the Lord saying that there is a sound that He is releasing. It's the, it's the dinner bell, but it's like a wooing. I hear Him saying it's, it's a wooing. It's not a sound of religion or an irritation to you because you feel like I have to do this. I hear Him saying it's like the cooing of doves. It's like the cooing of doves that He's released tonight. And I felt like there were people tonight who felt like, God, I want to, want to, but you felt like you just couldn't get out of your own way. And I felt the Lord saying, the beautiful thing about invitation is that I draw you in. I will draw you in. And so if you feel like you want to respond to this word just where you are, why don't that Pastor Catherine has shared tonight, why don't you just put up your hand where you are? Because the Lord is sees your response. He sees your hunger. He sees your desire. And His promise in the kingdom is that the hungry always get fed always get fed. So God, I thank You, Father, for Your supernatural enabling, Your supernatural enabling to come and eat. Those of you who feel like, I want to, but I don't know how to, Lord, I thank You, Lord, that You've given us the keys, Lord, how to pray according to Your Word today. Lord, that You're making space even for those who have felt too busy or that it was too difficult or You haven't known how. God, I thank You, Lord. It's like the, uh, the, the, inv- the answer is in the invitation. The answer to what you need is in the invitation. The answer to respond is in the invitation. So Lord, I thank You for Your enabling grace to even find space where it feels difficult. Or Lord, to supernatural revelation where where our minds haven't previously been able to. Lord, I thank You, Lord. The answer is in the invitation. So we say yes, we say yes to perfect love in Jesus' Name. Thank You, Lord. Amen. I think that's so beautiful. We're going to take communion together in just a moment. But before we do that, if you're here and you know in your heart, you aren't following God. There's an opportunity for you to humble yourself and say, yes, Lord, I want to respond to you as my Lord and my Saviour. Jesus Christ was slain for the sins of the whole world. But not everybody is saved. And and this is why. He sets before us life and death. And then He tells us, choose life. We have a part to play in that we respond. There were two thieves crucified alongside Jesus. One of them was mocking Him. And the other humbled himself and said, hey, we deserve to be here, but you've done nothing. Lord, and he acknowledged Jesus is Lord. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus responded, this day you'll be with me in paradise. What happened there is He humbled Himself. He acknowledged Jesus was Lord. He acknowledged He was a sinner. And Jesus was the way to eternal life, that He was Lord. And He received Him as Lord. He received His grace. And He was saved. Today, if you're here and you know in your heart, you need to make that choice where you say, God, I want to humble myself and receive Jesus as my Lord. I want to receive His grace. I want to receive His mercy. I want to receive His gift of redemption, of salvation, that I might become a new creation, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection. If that's you, would you just lift your hand where you are? I'd love to pray for you. Is there anybody here that says, yes, that's me? I want today to be the day I get my life right with God. Hallelujah. Well, I ask you to consider praying for some people this week. and Bring them in next week. Hallelujah. Pastor Chayanne's a wonderful evangelist. And, and I know that as we each week invite people, the Holy Spirit will draw them and they will be saved. If you're watching online and you know you need to get your life right with God, just get honest with God. Just pray, Lord, have mercy on me. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, that He died and rose again. And Lord, right now I ask you to have mercy on me. Forgive me for my sin. I receive your gift of grace, your gift of mercy. And I believe you forgive me. I receive you as my Lord and Saviour. And if you believe it, you will be 
saved. Hallelujah. We're going to take communion together. If you need some communion, could you just lift your hand wherever you are? Hallelujah. I want to say well done to you all for finding us. Hooray. We're going to have fun. This is going to be a lovely time. It is. I just love those prophetic words. I love, I love oranges. Hallelujah. Refreshing. And I thought that was a really strategic word Pastor James brought. We should really be listening and paying attention to that and embracing this. Hallelujah. So um, as you receive your communion, we're going to do communion groups tonight because I think it's a beautiful way for us to exercise what it looks like to, to do the, the work of the ministry. So if our communion group leaders could stand up wherever you are. What we do during communion groups is you just find one of these people and you get in a small group and we take communion together and we pray for each other. We prophesy and we encourage each other and we bear one another's burdens and we love each other. And, and it's a beautiful way for the body to be operating. So um, if our communion group leaders, you can put your hands up, keep your hands up there. And um, we're going to gather together. Lord, I speak the blessing of God over these elements and over you, uh, our body. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of Christ. Lord, let your word dwell in us richly. Lord, I ask for your blessing as we come together to eat and to drink the, the new covenant. As we do this together, Lord, bless them. Bless them as they go. Bless them as they read. Bless them as they talk. Look after the youth and young adults tonight as they have fun. Uh, Lord, I pray your blessing upon us all in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your covering, for your protection, for your blood and for your help. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. God bless you as you come. Come and find a communion group leader and let's take communion together.